but um and good day everybody so today i will be going through chapter seven of the mastering shiny book so this is about the uh, graphics so um the book talks about um, the render plot in book kind of referring back to chapter two so it's a powerful tool for displaying graphics. So that's basically what this is all coming up to. So it, the chapter's goal is to help us look at a, a full extent to create interactive plots, plot that is plots that responds to mouse events, such as click, double click, hover, brush, and so on. So we're also going to learn about um, other useful techniques using, including making plots with dynamic width and height and displaying images with render image. So in the in this chapter, we're using two packages, so ggplot2 and shiny. So the interactivity is all about um, the beautiful thing that comes out from the plot output function. So it's um it's kind of unique in the sense that we can it can be used as an output as well as an input um control that we're having here. So it can also be like respond to pointer events. So from the summary that we have here from the book clubs um the past book clubs, so it's been summarized that okay, you, the function releases an output that can also be an input, okay? So in the server, the render plot function releases the plot. So if I go back to this, we're going to start with um, a basic example. So a plot can respond to four different mouse clicks, mouse click events. So the mouse events are the click, double click, hover, um, which is, described here when the mouse the hover is when the mouse stays in the same place for a little while and the brush a rectangular selection tool so if you click down we're going to look at all these scenarios so to turn this event into shiny input you supply a string to the corresponding plot output argument so an example would be if you're going to use the click event so you have to supply this string that is the click is going to be equal to the unique identifier for that click event. So in this case, it's plot underscore click. So if it's going to be double click, we might want to say this db click, dbl click is equal to plot dbl click, something like that. So um, plot underscore hover. Um, for hover, then brush will be plot underscore brush, as you would want to kind of refer to that. So this creates an input, like input dollar sign, the name, that unique identifier for that click event. So this will be able to allow us to get that, uh, the input value that is going to come from that event that was generated. So, so this, okay, so this creates an input dollar sign, the plot underscore click that you can use to handle mouse clicks on the plot. So for the example that we have here, the example of handling the mouse click, we register the plot underscore click input. So they use that to update an output with the coordinates of the mouse click. So basically what this is trying to, the example here is trying to achieve is that we're going to create a click, um, a plot, sorry. So we'll have a plot here. This is a plot output. So we have the identifier as this unique identifier, but for the click event, we have this. So it's going to be the plot underscore click. So the information that is going to be generated that we're going to get from the click event is going to be displayed here for, for the verbatim text output. So from the server side, we're going to render the plot. So then we'll click it. 
the plot is going to be rendered using the data set empty cars. So the X axis, I think that that will be the weight, then the Y axis is going to be the MPG. So we have the resolution 96. So for the verb temp text output, we're going to render the print output here. So what this function is doing is that for this to run, we need to have clicked a point on the plot that was created here. So without that, we will not be able to get the values for the X and the Y coordinates. So this is going to be rounded to two decimal points. So the coordinates are going to be extracted from the click event, this one, this, then we're going to get the value for the X coordinates by attaching the dollar sign and the X value. So the same thing goes for the y and uh, the y coordinates. So these two values are going to be available from the click event, this plot underscore click. So both values are there. So we're going to demonstrate that in the R Studio. Then for these two coordinates that are now going to be extracted from the click event, we're going to combine them. So using the cat function. So we we'll start with the square bracket, then the x coordinate separated by comma and space, then this, the y coordinate and space, then we we'll close the bracket with the, another square bracket. So there's no separation, there's no space in between. It's a closed one because we're already replacing that here with uh, comma and space. So let's go to our studio to. see how this works out. So the first, this is the first example. So I'm going to run the packages. Then I'll select this. This is the function for the UI. Then the server side. Then I'm going to render everything using the Shiny app uh, function here. So I'm going to select this or code chunk, control enter. So I'm, I'm hoping you can see my, okay, the pop-up. So this is the pop-up. So if I click anywhere in this plot that has been rendered, we should have the X and Y coordinate displayed here. So if I click that, so this is it. So I click a point anywhere on the, plot and you can see it's changing because I'm clicking. I'm kind of initiating the click event. So by clicking any point, it can be one of the points from the data points from the empty cast or anywhere on the plot. So we're still going to have that displayed here. So as I click, the coordinates are changing here. So from what we have here. So this is just for the click event. So I hope um, that's okay. And if there's any comments at this point, I... So is there any comments or addition? For... Uh, no, no, you, you are good to go. Oh, okay, thank you. So um, so this is just basically the explanation for what we've just done. So we can replace any of um, the, the click events, we can replace that with either the double click or the over. So the following sections describe the events in more detail. We'll start with the click event, then briefly discuss this, double click and over, the learn about all these ones. So we can try this if we want to, then our, then he said, uh, okay, I'll then give a couple of examples um, from the, and the limitations of the interactive graphics. 
So we can try that and make some changes to the plot. Let's see. Um, so, uh, okay, so this is my code. So we can still say double click. TVL is then plot TVL. So hopefully we get this right. So let me see if I could just, so please correct me if I'm going the wrong route. So I'm hoping this should work. Okay, let me select this. Um, Is there a requirement? The okay, the requirement. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. So let me stop that. Okay. Um. Yeah. Thank you. Um. Okay. Let's try that. So if now I have, uh, let me see. I. So I have the plot rendered now. So if I click on this, nothing is happening. I click another point, nothing. But if I double click, it should work. Now it's working. So double clicking is changing. Double click, double click, double click. So, but if I click, no, it's not going to change. If I hover, it's not going to change because I'm kind of initiating the double click event, not the click or the hover or brush event. So you can try your hands on the other examples as well. So let me go back to the chapter. Okay. So I hope you can see my browser now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is the first example that we did. So we're going to the clicking section now. So the points event, the point event return a relatively rich list containing a lot of information. So we're going to take this further by using the near point. So what is said here is that so so it's going to talk about the data structure since you only need in relatively rare situations. So this, so instead what we want to use there is that we'll use the near point helper, which returns a data frame containing rows near the click, taking care of a bunch of fiddly details. So what we want to achieve, what he want to, wanted to achieve with this example is that we're going to use this function, which helps us to get details in a data frame structure of information that are related to the point that was clicked, provided this is part of the data set that we're we'll referring to. So the code here is still doing the same thing, is rendering the plot, then we're looking at the click event, not double click, not hover or brush. So then whatever we get from here, from the click event, we're going to have it like a search criteria to get the data that are related to that point. So from the server side, we'll render the plot. Then the table is now going to be rendered based on the click event, the values that was generated there. And you can see this is the click um, event that we're looking at the mouse events now. So we're using this near points, we're passing in the data sets, the click event, then we're assigning that, okay, the X variable is going to be from the weight, then the Y variable is from the MPG. So all this information, are what the near points information and the function is going to use to help us to get another output as a table in the form of a data frame. So basically that's just, instead of having the coordinates, only the coordinates returned as we had here, we're going to have a complete data frame that is returned. So um, I will go back to our studio now. 
So for the clicking events now, so we're using the near point. So for more information, we know how to get details of that function. So I can do this. Then we'll have more information about the near point. So it's, it's the same as brushed points. Um, kind of related, so they are getting information, at the data frame, the coordinate information, then XVAR, and all the other information that are there. We're still going to talk about the last two here, but for now, we're looking at the four default um, arguments that needs to be passed in here. So this is going to return, it finds the role rows of data selected on an interactive plot. So I'm going to select everything here. Then we'll run this. So I have a pop-up showing the rendered plot. So if I click anywhere here, the coordinates here that is referencing the X variable and the Y variable is not on in the data set. So that's why nothing is being displayed here. But if I click any of the points that are on in the data set, that the empty cars data set, then we can see that it returns a complete row of information about that point. So I can still do the same thing, click another point, another point. But if I click outside, nothing is going to be displayed here. So that is, this is the way this uh, function takes this interactivity a little bit further. So, um, so go back to the book. So, so far we're using the plot output and the plot function to generate our plots, which we are interacting with. So if there's any addition here before I go, if there's any maybe you want to add to what I've explained or the near point, I don't. Do you have any addition or comments, questions? No, no. All good. All good. Okay. Thank you. So um, from what we've done within this code chunk, we have four arguments here because we are using this function with the plot function. So if we replace the plot function with the ggplot to ggplot function, we don't need to add the last two um, arguments because that would be automatically inferred. So that is what we is explained here. Okay, so if you use ggplot2, you only need to provide the first two arguments since xvar and yvar can be automatically imputed from the plot data structure. So for that reason, for the other example that are within this chapter in the book, is using the ggplot2 to showcase the examples of the interactivity that comes with graphics. So that is what we're looking at here. So for this one, we have the plot output that is working with the ggplot function within the render plot um, function in the server. So we have the same thing, but the only thing that changes here is the ggplot function is being used instead of the bizarre plot function. Then the data set is still the same thing and the points are still the same thing. And we are still creating a, um, a scatter plot. So then we still have the click event as a, a requirement. Without that, we're not going to have the values rendered in the table. So then the near point now, instead of four arguments, we're having only two arguments being passed here. So because like we said, X and the Y variables are being automatically imputed. 
So I will take you back to R Studio. Then we'll run the code. So this is where it is. So I added the comments here. Then this is the code chunk. So if I run this, excuse me. So this is the plot. So it's different. The, the one we had with the plot function was circles, but this is like a black spot. So if I click on any of this, we're still going to get the same information, but if it's outside, nothing is going to be displayed. So we we'll click the points that will get the row of other information about that data point. So this is for this one. So for our the near point returns the output that's the values that are seen in row format or a data frame format. We can debug this or go step through the process by using this function. Browse the browser function. So this helps us to step through um, the codes. So if we copy this and go back to our code that we just ran now, we'll only need to replace this aspect. So then in between the requirements and that the required information and the near point, we have the browser function there. So that's what is here. So if we go back there, we can either click the button to step through. There's a button in the in interface that is shown or we copy this code and put it in the console so i'll show you what happened so this will allow us to see how that the near point function works so this is the same code but i comment out this aspect that we used earlier then I replace it with the new one that has the browser function within it. So, okay, so next, let me copy and run this code chunk. So, first for us to get to the point where the browser function is, we need to first of all click this uh, any of the points to start the mouse click event. So now I'm back in my R Studio from the pop up. So I clicked one of the points there. So now I'm in R Studio. So what we need to do, so it's showing us debug lines may not match because the editor content have changed. Okay, no. Don't worry about that. So that what, what I was just saying is that now we have new menus here in the console. So we can either click this button next, then we'll click it again. So this is now going to bring the pop ID, the rendered plots and the table back. So we're going to see the output because now we are on that line near point um, function. So, okay, sorry. I think maximizing it kind of change the resolution and everything. The, so I have to click again. Let me just click one of the points. I get back to our studio, click next and next. Then it takes me back to the browser. You can see the table is now being populated now with the raw information. But if you don't want to click the buttons there, you can still um, kind of go back to R Studio, click. Uh -huh. So I'm sharing the screen now, my R Studio. Then I can run it again. Okay. So if I click this, one of the points, I can go and uh, kind of copy any of this and the this function and drop it here hopefully that will work 
So it now displays the row of information in my console instead of the browser or the pop-up that we had earlier. So that this is another way you can see how the near points function works. So the output shows you how, what it's going to return when that function is run. So it's another way of debugging your code. The, if you're having too many codes, like, lines of codes that you want to run step by step, you can use the browser function to help you achieve that. So um, I would appreciate comments or addition to where we are now. Oh, yeah. Um, that's, we, we talked about this about uh, in the chapter of the, the previous chapter and, and we talked about the uh, uh, debugging and we said that we could use uh, this browser function to, to, to activate the debugger by code, but the best practice is to use this, um, uh, this small circles on the line uh, when, we, when we do debugging. So it's the same functionality, but uh, without writing uh, code to do it. So yeah. Thank you. Okay. Oh yeah, and, and another like another point, small points. Um, just want to add a note about the re the require function. Uh, we use the require to make uh make a dependency on on the inter input to be available. So if if the input is not available, uh, the whole okay. stack of uh of dependencies and reactivity will be stopped. That's why we okay. are using it to to make it dependent on the input block click. So if 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 nothing happened to the input or, or is the event itself, because block click here is an event, and if the if this event is not happen, so if you are not clicking anywhere on the or, or any circle, uh, nothing will uh, activate the the rendering of near points, but when we when when we, when this is available and this click is happened now uh, it continues to until it reach the near points and it, it display it in the render table function so the requirement for just, just an, a small note that requirement is co is con um, controlling some and somehow the the flow of uh, reactivity we just make it sure make sure that uh, this input is available. If it's not, then uh, stop the, the the reactive function or the reactive process. Yeah, that's a small point I, I want us to, to point out. Thank you. So any other comments, addition? Aaron, do you have anything you want to add? Not at this time. I'm I'm following you. Uh, so uh, good job walking through the material. Okay. Yeah. All Thank good. You. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So um, I think the next thing is um, so another way to use the near points function is with all rows is equal to true and adding these two arguments, so that will return the original data frame plus two new columns. So this is the first one, that's the dist underscore. It gives the distance between the row and the event in pixels. Then selected says whether or not it's near the click event, whether or not it's a row that would be returned when all rows is equal to false. So we'll see the example later. That's it's the same thing that I will say. So we'll get to see the example soon. So other points events uh, uh, we're not going to go too much into. So it's the, okay, so the same approach works equally for all this, like I showed one of the examples for the double click. So all we just need is just change that name, just change the name, that's all. So if needed, you can get additional control over the events by supplying this information. So you can click on this to get more on the documentation or you get more information from 
your the console using the question mark or the help function can get the information there. So, um, but much is not discussed about that in the book here. So next we'll go to brushing. So brushing is another way of selecting points on a plot to use, um, so we use the brush. So it's a rectangular selection defined by four edges. So in Shiny, using a brush is straightforward once you've mastered click and near points. You just switch to brush argument and the brushed points. So instead of near points, go for brush points helper functions. So if you remember when I tried to get more information about, um, let me take you to our studio. You can see they're more or less like brother, sister um, function. So you can see the brush points also has documentation about the near points. So it's basically almost the same thing. So just different ways of the interaction. So we'll just replace that. So brush is now being replaced. So just change the name to plot underscore brush. Okay. So, and now we have brushed points. Remember, we're not using four arguments here. We could have used the same thing just like we did with the near point. But because we're not using the plot function, we're using ggplot function instead. So we don't need to add the remaining two um, arguments for the xvar and the yvar. So that's for this one. So we can look at how this works by going back to our studio. So that's the next example here, I think. Yeah. So I'm selecting this chunk. So click Control Enter. Then we have the pop up. So from the description or the definition of brushing is like a force, a squared selection of points. So it's going to be more than, we can select more than one point now. So if I select one point, we get one row. So if I go back and select two points, we get two rows that are near to this one. So to, near to the brushed points that were selected. So you can see the four points, four edges that was described in the book. And you can still select more than this, as many as you can. So this is how the brushed uh, points function works. So you can see the selection here. So um, so I, I think this is kind of interesting. I chose this because I've had uh, kind of an experience with using even a leaflet um, function. So you can use it to get some kind of points. It's almost similar to the, what we're achieving here as well. So this is the way the brushed points will work with your plots, the normal plots, um, just similar to that in leaflet plots as well. So um, this brushed, so now um, you can also use these brush options to control the color fill and stroke or restrict brushing to a single dimension with this. So we can explore that. So, but that example is now here. So next we're going for modifying the plot. So we're going to kind of, uh, kind of go outside of what we're discussing here. So because we needed this function to be used for this example, so this is the reactive valve. So um, so he, he tried to explain this, although we're going to meet it in another chapter, that's chapter 16 if later. So, but we're going to explain a little bit about it. So as you might guess from the name, so reactive valve is a rather similar is rather similar to reactive function. So you create a reactive value by calling this the reactive valve function with its initial value and retrieve that value in the same way as reactive. So 
we're going to refer to the name of that reactive value as if we're going to refer to a function like we do with the reactive. When we create a, maybe a new um, value with reactive function. So this is an example. We have a val that we're giving the name to this reactive value and the initial value that is assigned is 10. So if we run this, we can select this and we'll go to our studio. Okay, let me, uh, okay, it's mm, not going to work outside of Shiny. So, but the most important thing is that, um, let me just go back to the chapter. So what we're doing here is that we assign in, an initial value here. That's 10. So if we call the name plus the opening and closing brackets, we'll get the initial value that was assigned. So this is 10, okay? So we can now change it by calling the name with the opening and closing brackets and adding a new value inside that bracket. So we don't need to call the reactive val function again. All we just need to do is call the name of that reactive value and add a new value into it. So it now updates what was initially assigned in the first place. So if we call the name now, we're going to get 20 instead of 10. So the same thing, if you can call, bring up the name of that reactive valve that was created, then we add, can do anything you want. You can combine, if it's a text, you can combine something to it, then you get a new value. So it's as simple as this. So, um, So what we just need to do is to go straight into the points and to the next example. So for now, let's put the challenge, the challenges of learning this aside, okay? And show you why you might bother. So imagine you want to visualize the distance between a clip and the points on the plot. In the app below, we start by creating a reactive value, okay, to store the to store those distances, that's the initial distance. So we initialize it with a constant that will be used before we click anything. So then we use the observe event to update the reactive value when the mouse is clicked. In a ggplot that visualizes the distance with point size. So I'll explain, I'll try my best to explain the function because kind of, this is kind of not doing so much. So what we do is that we set the seed to have a uniform um, execution of the code. So then we have the initial data frame that is created is 100 rows, this um, 100 values kind of. So that is what was going to be generated here. Then the next thing is that we have the UI, we have the plot output. So which is also going to have the click event so the plot underscore click. So on the server side, we have an initial value assigned to all the rows, all the hundred rows that was generated from this data frame. So we assigned an initial value of one to all of them. So then we now move on to the observe event. This is when we click any of the points on the plot that was generated. Okay, so if we click any of the point there, then we get the click event. We, that is what we're going to be observing. When we notice any changes here, that there's been a click, then this is going to change. So the dist here that has been created with the initial value of one is going to be replaced based on the value that was clicked. So this value now is going to be changed. We're going to get like the coordinates and we're going to use that to get the extra two columns that we mentioned when we are going to add this extra arguments there. So if you remember, we mentioned this here. 
So if we add this extra argument, we're going to add, get two extra columns that is going to be attached to our data frame or rows that is going to be generated based on the click event. So that is what is going to, we're going to see happening here. So now we want to get that distance that was explained earlier here. So this it gives the distance between the row and the event in pixels, okay? So instead of having the initial one, one, one for all the rows, we're going to have something different based on the near point function that is going to be generated here. So from that, what we have here is now going to determine the size of each point for each of the coordinates, the X and the Y. Um, that is the points that are on the plot. So then we also scale the size of the area using this limit. This was kind of an experiment that done by Hadley. We can to generate such value. So he also advised that we can do the same thing. So I I think he mentioned that somewhere. Okay. Okay here. So this is where he said is an experimentation that it did. So this is what will help us to kind of spread the sizes based on the arguments that are here. Okay, so it's going to be the ladies, the limits, then the maximum size 10. So it's not going to go beyond this, but the distance, I'll show you how you can kind of see what is happening. So I'll take you back to our studio now. So, um, so this is the code chunk. So we can look at the initial value here. So what I did was this, okay, I just print, we can print out, or we look at it, let's look at it first. We might not appreciate it, but I'll just take you through. Let's do this first. We'll get the plot. So we get the plot here. So this is the plot. So can click on any of this. Then this is the point. And based on the point that we clicked, we can see that the sizes of each of these points are scaled down using that scaled uh, function that we have in the code. Then we're also looking at the distance, that dist underscore value that was generated. That is what is being used to spread and push forward the sizes of all these points. So if I click another point, you'll see what we have here. It's changing from that point downwards. So it's the, the point that we click is this going to be the smallest. And as we move further away, the sizes increases. So that is just an example that he wants to showcase using this point. So I click another point, the same thing happens. And the further the points are away, the bigger they are, based on that scale function that was used. So I'll take you back to our studio. So an interesting thing, maybe for me, I just wanted to see, okay, now this is the react, we're talking about the reactive value. Let's see what actually is there, the initial value. So this, this, so you have to remember you add this. Um, then after the observe events here, okay, let's see what we would get. So uh, kind of, let's print again, print. So I think, okay, so I would use this again, I hope I remember. Uh, okay, let's see what's this saying. After, I think I, did I do anything wrong here? Sorry, let me trace my way back. I think the bracket okay. for observe event. Observe events. Okay. The closing bracket. Okay. This. Okay. I. Okay. 
Yeah, that's the this is the close and brackets. Okay, I wanted the print. Um, okay, let's see. I hope I'm still right. So the um, bracket on line one thirty three is for okay. Let's observe event right now. It should be for the server, I believe. Okay, let me let me just yeah. I think I can push it here. Let's see. Let's push it here and see. We want to see the output for the initial value. Then after the click event, this should have changed the values here. Okay, sorry. I still need to add this here. So or uh, is good now. Let's see. So I I I I tried something like this, but I just let me see if I can still get it out. Okay. Um no. Okay, do something. Yeah, I knew I okay. Um Yeah, it's uh, it's nice. needing Okay, uh, I need needing... to bring this out. Yeah. And you could um, like put it in okay I, in line uh hundred. Can I? I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but um, you could have like the curly braces after uh, the input load click, comma. Where? Uh, line one two nine. One two nine. Yeah. Okay, I should. No, okay, no, after... I should put it. Let it add okay. as it is. Just add mm -hmm. like leave it as it is. Like make it here. Like uh, best hit, best it here, and then go into the line uh, uh, one hundred and twenty nine, and uh, add just the curly braces. Yeah, after the comma. Okay. After yeah. where this? Yeah, this. Yeah, curly. The beginning of curl, yes, and at the end at the end of the of okay, uh, it should be here. Like, yeah, and and the, the disk is inside mm -hmm. it. By this one, let me see. Okay. Uh, print okay. here inside it. Okay. Yeah, like this. It's no, no. I I forgot what comma. I did. Yeah, I just want like, to the comma. Without the comma. Yeah. Yeah, try it now. Okay, let's try it now. Okay. Okay, let me see. Just uh still wrong. Okay, okay, let, let me I can't remember. I know this okay, let, let's just print out this one first. Okay. Let me see what I can get from this. So I think I tried it somewhere different. So I just wanted to see what would come out and this. Um, okay, this is the render plot here. And correct. Yeah, like um, the ones that we, okay, let, let but the first one let is let me bring this up first. Run. Yeah. Uh, Oh, it's still, I did something. I've, I think this live coding. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, so you hear me? Okay. Okay, I can I can hear you now. Okay, so the the brand this the first one will not work because it's not it's it's not inside the text. It should be inside anything that. Observe event, reactive, or reactive event, event reactive, anything that has the reactive context in it. So this one is, is that will that shows the errors. The the last one that we did inside the curly braces, which is that one that should work. Mm. But to show it, yeah. you could have it, okay. be, yeah, before and after this this. After this one, okay. Like yeah, this before to have it before and after okay. to see it. Yeah. 
Okay, so now I can print it out here. Yeah, it should work. Okay, okay. Let's try this now. Let me try this out. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, this is it. Yeah. So this is the new point. So the, I actually did the second one. I don't. Yeah. Before we could. So I the second. Uh, yeah. So I need that one now. So I need it out. Where would I get that now? If you uh, want before. to put another print statement before to... that, you can put that in observe without observe event, only observe the observer function. Okay. So okay. Or just like so that would print be observe. for the first curly braces. Okay, let's say this. The change uh, of the line uh, 130. So before the line 130, you can print it. Before this, like before the curly brackets? No, after the curly, the curly bra bracket. The, 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 the click event here? Yeah, here. here. So I should, okay, here. Okay, kind of mixing it. Okay, let's try this then. I'll Print stop this. Yeah. Okay. Let me print now uh, like this. Um, yeah, that should work. Okay, yes. Okay, yeah. Thank you. So that would show. Uh, okay, see you. So Actually. now you, you can see the one, the ones that were assigned first, that's the initial value. Now when I click, then the values are now changed. So that's the way the reactive uh, function actually works. So it's being replaced here now. I think that's basically what I wanted to achieve. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. So that, that's just another way of kind of seeing what you're doing, print it out, and the console instead of everything in the browser for now. So, um, okay. Okay, uh, Aaron is, has left for now. Okay. So that is for the reactive value, getting to see what um, is being printed out before and after the uh, mouse event, mouse click event. So I'll go back to the book. So is there any other thing you want to add to kind of make it to this section? the reactive var and the modifying the values um no no we i think we we could move on on, on this one because we will okay. discuss it in deeper detail in uh, chapter 16 so we will dive okay. deeper in. okay so the same thing for the click we can also replicate the same thing for the um the brushed um points the brush points and um, function. So I'll quickly go over that. So this is um, the code for that. So as the values are being changed, just as we had it for the click event, we're also going to have the same thing here. So the code here is used to kind of represent uh, a scenario where you're able to select some and you're not selecting some. So whichever point on your plot that you're selecting, you're going to um, replace that. We're going to showcase that by having a different color. 
So the only thing that is different here is that we have another um, um, mouse click event that's the double click. So we have the brush that's for selection of the points that we're going to color. So whenever we select any aspect, any point on the plot, so the observe event function is going to capture that, is watching out for that event to happen. And this is where we're going to use this uh, input. So when this happens, we're going to have to bring in the brushed points, which is going to look at the data set. That's the, day, the first data set. Then we'll look at the event. That's the coordinates that have been generated based on the brushed uh, or the selected points using the square, um, the rectangle selection. So, and also we have the all, all rows is equal to true. This is going to help us to generate the selected underscore. That is the second extra column that is being um, created by adding this extra um, argument, the ally, all rows. And then the second one is the add dist. So this one helps us. We have that dist underscore. And now we're looking at for the brushed event, the brush event, we're having the selected underscore. So it helps us to get all the coordinates or information related to those selected areas using the rectangle selection. So I would copy and run that, uh, this code. I will run we, this code. Yeah, we just have like five minutes to wrap up the session. So okay. I'm just through. Okay, okay, sorry. So this is just the way this uh, work. And I think this is just it. So I'll just go through. The last aspect is the dynamic height and width. So you can change the width and the height of your plot as you want. So here is just to show you how this can change based on the values that are selected from the slider. So whatever value that is selected from the slider is going to be changed, is going to change the size of the plot. Here we have an initial value and that is going to be changed based on what is selected on the slider. So the last one is just showing us how to add images to our Shiny apps. So you can only get this run if you click on the link that is provided in the book. So, but for the dynamic height and width, let me just run this quickly. Then I'll show that. So if I change any of this, we'll get to see the changes there. So, so this brings me to the end of the chapter. So I hope this was kind of helpful and look forward to another session. So thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you for presenting. This was very helpful. Um, um, the next session we will talk, um, I think I am the one that should uh, explain things. Uh, present uh, uh, so uh see you go see you guys next time and um thank you cookies for presenting yeah thanks a lot thank, thank you, you. bye you're there.